Hey, 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 everybody. I'm so glad that you are here. Okay, you can follow me around while I try to get set up and talk to you today. Well, while I'm doing that, welcome everybody. Today we are going to be talking about the exciting world of podcasting and how being a podcast guest can actually have some incredible benefits to you. And we're not going to talk about just any aspect of podcasting. Um, sorry, referring to some some things that I'm trying to set up here, but we're going to be talking about uh, the incredible benefits, like I said to you. So here's what I want you to do: just grab a seat, get comfortable. I'm going to walk you through all of this, but I promise you that you're going to come to understand why being a podcast guest may just be the best decision you ever make. It's going to um, be very lucrative for you to do that. And I'm going to talk to you about some of these benefits. Now, you might be wondering, really seriously, Laura, how is being a podcast guest on someone's podcast show going to benefit me? Well, um, I can think of several ways. It's not just about having your voice out there, but then um, that's definitely a perk. But, you know, being a podcast guest can open up so many doors and opportunities for you, especially financially. And we're going to walk through that. Let me let me just tell you some things. Did you know I was I was looking at some facts, some facts about podcasts. And I don't know if you realize this or not, but. Since 2016, there has been this surge in podcast listeners and viewers. So in 2020, there were over 1.75 million podcasts and over 43 million episodes available worldwide. And that number has grown. That was just that was just in 2020. That's the latest figure that I found. And since then, there has been a 78% increase in the number of people who actually listen to or view podcasts. So approximately 116 million Americans, which is 40% of the American population. I'm going to read some of this. 41% of the U.S. population have listened or watched a podcast. This represents a significant increase from previous years. In fact, the number of people listening to podcasts has increased by 79% since 2016. That is quite significant. And this doesn't include that. They, these are listener based podcasts for the most part. This doesn't include the new, um, the new surge in video podcasting that has gone on since then. So th the reason we're talking about, um, that is because that adds an even larger percentage of people, of Americans who have engaged in podcast shows of some form, whether that's audio or video. So we're going to talk a little about like the demographics. I was, I was looking at that. Let me read some of this to you. Podcast listenership is diverse, but certain demographics are more likely to listen regularly. So millennials and Gen Z are among the most avid podcast consumers, but Listeners span all age groups and get this, as more and more people become introduced to the opportunities to engage in podcasts, older generations of people are now joining the podcast world. Some of that, you know, the barriers to technology and, and age and all of that going on, but um, now even more people in diverse age groups are starting to listen to or view podcasts and of course, we know that my show happens to be a video podcast show, so it does attract more people that way because we can they can tune out to the video if they want and still listen to the audio, but the video helps. Here are the listening habits. Many podcast consumers, this is according to a consumer report, tune into podcasts as part of their daily routine. So on a regular basis, people are tuning into podcasts, whether during their commute to work, or while exercising, relaxing, or even doing household chores. So the flexibility in consumption contributes to the popularity of podcasts. So what's so nice about that is people get to decide where and when they want to consume podcasts. They also said that global influence, huh? podcasts have 
gained significant popularity amongst listeners and viewers who are searching for information in an engaging way to be both informed and entertained. So they're not just looking for information. Many of these listeners and viewers are now also looking for entertainment, and they're getting that through the podcast. There are some educational impacts being made by podcasters. Podcasts are increasingly being used in education settings as a supplemental learning resource, and they provide an accessible and engaging way for students to explore topics of interest beyond traditional classroom materials. So these are just some, some statistics and information pieces that I found as I was as I was doing my research for this particular podcast. And I found it quite, quite, um, quite intriguing for me because the truth is I didn't used to engage in podcasts at all. And even when I became a podcast host many, many years ago, um, because it just, I don't know, I didn't realize that it was a thing, but now I consume podcasts more than ever before. I'm constantly searching for new podcasts and listening to people because life is busy and I like to be able to do these these um, shows on my terms. I want to listen when it's convenient for me. So knowing all of these various facts, why wouldn't you want to become a podcast guest? I mean, it only makes sense, right? I know you might still be wondering, well, what are the benefits really to being a podcast guest? And that's what we're going to explore. So first and foremost, being a podcast guest allows you, you the guest, to reach new audiences. Think about it. Every time someone is a guest on a podcast show, that that individual podcast show has its own audience. And let's say you have an audience of people on your social media, on your website, perhaps, uh, where wherever you might, on your blog post, wherever you might have that audience. But if you are a guest on a podcast show, now you have tapped into somebody else's audience and not just that person's audience, but their viewers' audiences as well, if those viewers share those episodes. So it has a far-reaching effect, Okay. And you're introducing yourself to people basically that you would otherwise never have had the opportunity to come across. Let me give you an example, okay? When a guest appears on, say, my podcast show, um, for and for those of you who don't know, my podcast show called A Book is an opportunity for authors to be interviewed about the writing process, their books, it gives them an opportunity to not just market themselves as an author, but to contribute to the writing world, to other authors out there who are seeking information, and to get their book or books known to the world. Otherwise, those books might be just sitting on a, uh, an Amazon page somewhere and nobody ever stumbles across them. So when they are on my show and they talk about the aspects of writing, they talk about all of these things they get to share that with their audience. I send them a link, they share that with their audience and there's a this snowball effect. Now their audience shares it with their audience. My audience shares it with their audience. And so there's this far reaching effect. It's a snowball effect of things that happen. But it's not just about reaching new ears. It's not about reaching new people. It's also about building credibility. And when you are invited into a podcast, okay, it's like receiving a stamp of approval about whatever it is that you have going on from somebody that is not necessarily your grandmother, your mother, your sister, your brother, your best friend. It's a stamp of approval from somebody who says what you have to say. Hey, this person that is on my podcast has something valuable to say. And so it's going to give you some validity and authority and boost your reputation in your specific area or topic area. Okay. Again, I'm going to I'm going to use my own podcast show as another example. Let me see if I can pull something up here for you. 
So there are literally millions and millions of authors and writers in this world. And I have an average of two author guests per week, sometimes more on this show. And obviously that is less than millions and millions of authors in this world. So when an author does get to appear on my show, the world takes note. The world perks up and they listen. Because like I said, there are millions of authors, but not every one of those has the opportunity to end up on my show, okay? It gives them credibility and exposure that they would otherwise never get. Like I said, their book would end up just on the back end of a dusty shelf somewhere in a bookstore perhaps, or just some obscure Amazon link out there um, in other words, it would be lost in the sea of millions and millions and millions of other books. But when they share their story and their interview link goes up on my site and, um, you know, they, they get to share that on my show, then they can also take that link and share it on their author's page. And it says, hey, look at me. I'm not just another author that's sitting on a dusty shelf. I am somebody that has something to say. And I, I'm a step above. I have been elevated now to um, an author who is better than just an author who has not had their voice heard. Okay, we're going to move on here. And let me tell you, let's not forget about networking. I want to stress this. I want to hit this home. I know you're anxious to get to the money stuff and we will, but I want to really talk to you about how important it is to be on a podcast show just for the networking opportunities of that. Podcasting is a fantastic way to, I'm going to pull up some, some other stuff here for you to take a look at. Here we go. Podcasting is a fantastic way to connect with other like-minded individuals within or outside your industry. So, because by being a podcast guest, you're not only forming relationships with the host or hosts, but you're also opening the door to potential collaborations, partnerships and opportunities that basically you could not have imagined before. I can't tell you the number of guests that have now become my friends as a result of them being on my podcast. And so, and I have resources that they get to tap into. Basically, sometimes I have a guest who comes on and we're preparing for their show and they might say to me, yeah, I really struggled with making my book cover. And I can say, hey, I had a guest on here who had a fantastic book cover and here's the resource that they had. Why don't you contact them, get a hold of them, see how they went about that. So they're networking with people within their specific, and it's not just my channel, I mean, it's any channel, whether you're talking about finance or real estate or uh, home improvement, whatever the podcast channel is about, you can network with people who have the same interests, likes, and goals as you do. And I, and I know at my show, especially, I like to say that, um, you know, people make friends. We, we all make friends when we get on my show. But now what you might be thinking is, okay, but I'm not, I'm not podcast guest, Mr. Who would want to hear from me? Why would anybody want me to be on their podcast? I'm not an expert. I don't know what I would say. Let me tell you something. You do have something to say, and it does not matter whether you are an expert. This is an opportunity for you to get exposure. And that's what is most important is to be on a podcast where you get exposure. Most podcasters, believe it or not, are not looking for experts. I mean, they, some are, some only want to talk to somebody with a PhD and a proven track record and all of these things. But most podcasts are done conversation style. And it's about the the topic and your opinion on that topic. You don't have to be an expert. In fact, I know on my my show, on my channel, I always say nobody is an expert when it comes to writing. Everybody has a different style of writing. Everybody has a different way that they go about publishing and marketing. And so I'm not looking for experts. I'm looking for raw individual people who want to contribute to the conversation that we have going on. And in that process, they get exposure. 
So um, yeah, don't ever feel like you don't have something to contribute. And certainly uh, this is a video podcast show and I have a lot of people say, oh, I'm camera shy. I don't want to be on camera. And and like I told you, some of that audio can go out to other platforms and 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 all of that. But man, you are really holding yourself back. One thing that everybody knows is I got to turn some things off on my computer here. I got I got people messaging me and all kinds of stuff that I really don't want to have going on. So let me go ahead and turn that off. Uh, yeah, yeah. So just having that visibility is going to make such a huge difference. And people are looking for real. They're not looking for you to be perfect and polished. I never I'm never perfect and polished when I'm doing a podcast show. People are looking for real. They want real. They want to hear the honest conversations. They don't need you um, to be fancy in any in any way, shape, or form. Certainly, you want to put out good quality and you want to represent yourself or your company or your business or your product well. I'm not saying to uh, not do those things, but you'd be surprised how simple the process really is. And most podcast hosts are very willing to help you walk through that process if you're a little bit nervous. But imagine having something great to share. Um, let me back up for a second. We know studies show that people are more engaged when they can hear or see somebody in more than a three-second or 30 second, or even one minute advertisement clip. Imagine having something to say, I started off there, about your product, your service, yourself, some information that you have, and having no place to tell anybody about that. No place at all. You end up on a podcast show. Most of those run at least 20 minutes, if not longer. Now you have an engaged audience of people who are going to remember what you had to say. They're not going to tune out because you've you've brought them in. You've invited them into this, this conversation, not just an ad that is going on. And now you have this visibility and exposure that you can send out to the rest of the world. And all of this translates to one thing, you know, the one thing that I know you all want to get into, and that is the money. How does this, how does this add money to your bank account? I'm going to talk to you about, um, there were, I'm going to use this example. Let's follow the money trail, if you will. So let's, let's take Sandra, for example. Okay. I have some notes about Sandra. And Sandra did a podcast show about a potato peeler. And um, I've changed some names and some details here because I don't want to step on anybody's toes and, and misspeak. But she developed a new product, okay, to help people peel potatoes more efficiently. And if you were like me, you hate peeling potatoes. She tried to determine what the best marketing venue would be for her. And after... Doing some research, she saw that print ads were thousands and thousands of dollars for her to do. Television ad spots only lasted a few seconds, and they were way out of her price range. Or, you know, most people run startup companies. We can't all be Coca-Cola and get those Super Bowl ads. Um, even radio spots, because less and less people are dialing into actual radio. They're doing streaming instead, or some of the streaming ads that she could do were not only complicated, but very, very expensive. There, there are different ways of advertising. And she decided that in today's busy world, where more people than ever are tuning in to podcast shows such as this one, that her money was better spent doing a podcast, being a podcast guest on as many podcasts as she could, because she had that broader reach, more people. Research shows that most advertising dollars have a smaller return on investment. I'm reading some of this because I did some research on this. A smaller ROA on investment than if they invested into becoming a podcast guest. 
because being a podcast guest is, is pennies, pennies. Why? Because most podcast hosts, most interviewers, um, first off, the, people are more likely to remember that podcast interview. So when I'm driving down the street, right, and I hear an ad come on for potato peeler, I may think, oh, yeah, I could use a new potato peeler. But by the time that ad ends, I'm not thinking about potato peeler. That's not what I'm thinking about. And I'm certainly not going to pull the car over to go run out and and uh, get that potato peeler or dial a number because somebody rattled it off on the on the ad super fast in less than 30 seconds. There are some catchy jingles out there that you might remember the next time your transmission goes out and you're thinking, oh, I need, you know, who do I call to fix my transmission? But for the most part, that what they're doing is just repetitive brand association. And then, yes, it works and yes, it's effective, but it is incredibly time consuming and expensive. But now I've listened to Sandra on a podcast and she's talked about how she decided to come up with this potato peeler, how her potato peeler works. Um, how her business is doing. And Sandra is now a memory that I have. So I'm more likely to go over to, I'm going to search Google next time I need a potato peeler. I'm saying, oh, I remember hearing about this great potato peeler. I am more likely to go pull up Sandra's website once I Google it and find it, even if I don't remember what, what the website was that the podcaster mentioned, but I remember Sandra. And I remember this potato peeler. And I may even remember what this potato peeler was called. And I'm going to go look for that potato peeler. And now when I get that potato peeler, I am more likely to share that with my audience, my friends on my Facebook, my friends on my Instagram. I'm going to talk about it on my social media. I'm going to say, hey, guys, I got a new potato peeler. You should check this out. Okay, so it's this, it's this um, cascading effect that being on a podcast show has. And why is there more ROA, return on investment? ROI, I'm sorry, ROI, return on investment. Boy, acronyms are hard, aren't they? Especially this time of day. Anyway, more return on investment because, make this as simple as I can, most podcasters charge pennies, pe very little. I know um, I hardly charge anything at all for people to be on my podcast. And really all that does, most, most podcasters only charge enough to cover their basic expenses. There are expenses, production expenses that go along with producing a podcast for somebody. You know, they might, they have to pay for the platforms that they put that podcast on in some cases, uh, their websites to maintain all of the equipment, time set up, all of that, that goes into producing a podcast show. So, but they generally charge very little. In fact, if you have somebody who's trying to charge you thousands and thousands of dollars to be on their show. It's it's generally a scam. And some podcasters will have you on their show for free and they work out some kind of a product exchange agreement with you or they'll let you, uh, they want affiliates from you and things like that. So they, they, they want something in return for sure. But that's nothing compared to the thousands and thousands of wasted dollars that people can do. And I'm not saying wasted in the sense that there won't be some return is just far more minimal than if you are on a podcast where you have now gotten into somebody's brain and they are going to remember you and they may even share that podcast show itself and spread the the news about you your product your service in my case where people are guests on my show to talk about their books they're going to share information about your book with their audience hey i heard about this really great book the other day you might be interested in reading it or they're they're thinking you know what i think that's a book i might go ahead and buy and maybe i'll buy two copies now i'm going to go ahead and get it as a gift for someone because i already know what's in the book i heard the author talk about it it's funny how people some of my authors become people's favorite authors and not not just because of the book itself because i have some good authors who have written some fantastic stuff but because they feel like they know something about that author. And so they'll follow that author around. And when they write a new book, then they're more likely to go check out that author's new book than another random author who wasn't on the show, who wasn't on a podcast. <sighs> Honestly, one podcast interview can provide many, many years 
of potential revenue for you because that show that podcast show is generally left up for a long time and people may stumble across it it can get revived for one reason or another um in some cases shows can go viral that happens just various interviews can can um just mean the difference to your your business or to you and maybe you have a message out there that you want to get out and honestly i feel like the most important thing is that you be a podcast guest so that you can contribute to the many voices that are out there on whatever subject you have the connections the the contribution that you get to make into the the world is it's just phenomenal it's just enormous and so i would consider becoming a podcast guest for whatever it is you have going on obviously my show isn't for everybody because not everybody is a writer or a wannabe writer so look around, see what podcast shows you have the potential to be a guest on and reach out to them. Do that. It will make a difference. It'll put some money in your pocket. I want to thank you for having spent your time listening to this podcast. I want to thank you, um, you know, always for tuning in. And please do me a favor, big favor, hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, if you have questions about being a guest on this show, you're more than welcome to reach out to me and I'll leave all those links in the description today for you. Well, I, I look forward to hearing about your podcasting journey. As always, thank you. Thank you for tuning in and God bless.